All right, in this video, I want to cover the procedures for valuing a stock so I can either buy the stock or I can buy call options long term or I can sell puts. Uh, primarily, I'm thinking of selling puts, but the homework is the same either way. So I have a stock here, Snapchat, and let's say I want to put on a trade, but first I need to know what is this worth? What's my risk? What's the outlook for the stock? Uh, if you do this homework, you'll have more confidence when you're trading because you'll have done some homework, you'll understand the business. It doesn't take that long once you get good at it. But what we have here is we have a chart. This is a weekly chart. And what we know is at one point, people were paying $80 a share for Snapchat. Now it's at $9 a share. And they had more hopes, more growth expectation in 2021. A lot of stocks did. And then something happened and now there is less enthusiasm in the stock. So $9 a share. Let's, I'm gonna show some indicators just real quick because I always like to look. Price to cash flow, we know they have positive cash flow. Price to sales is 2.973. So a, a high growth company might have 10 times sales or more, and that's like really expensive. This is only three times sales. So there's not a lot of enthusiasm on a price to sales basis. 30 times sales was when it was at $80. So that that is a good metric. And I'll just blow it up see, so you can see here. Price to sales is like a very broad uh, valuation metric. You want to get the most bang for your buck. So we know that, hey, it's not as hot as it used to be. Uh, I already wrote down the earnings on this uh, chart. And I get the earnings from Seeking Alpha. Uh, and then I plot them and they change. But these are very important because analysts are doing a lot of work for us already. And then we need to we need to look at those numbers to see what analysts are expecting. Uh, I'm, I'm getting data from Seeking Alpha. These are the earnings, as you can see, for every year. 2024, 2025, 2026. I think they have like, what, six years of earnings? 2024 is this year. It's still considered the forward year because it's not over. So they're expecting to make 22 cents this year. And over the next five years, that's going to go up to 173. If this year happens as they expect, 22 cents per share, the PE at this current price, I think it's around nine bucks, would be a forward PE of 39 uh, price to earnings. That means that uh, anything above 20 is a little bit expensive. Anything below 10 is more attractive because you get more bang for your buck. Uh, you can flip this ratio and do earnings per price and you'll get an earnings yield. And that's kind of useful. So right now, what is this? Like a, like a two, a three, two to three percent earnings yield, which is very wimpy. We would want to see a 10% earnings yield or a 10 earnings to price. But because this is a growth stock and it's still going from losing money to making money, uh, and a lot, a lot of people are actually interested in Snapchat, it's kind of expensive. And as, as you can see, this is a 141% growth rate. And then the next year, a 70% growth rate. These are high growth numbers. So there's there's a premium for stocks like that. However, if you buy it for $9 and everything pans out as analysts expect, then you're only paying a 5 PE for, for this company that will eventually grow to uh, what they predict, $1.71 in earnings. And that's why I'm interested, because today it's a 40 PE based on its current earnings. But if it grows up, grows earnings, then that 5 PE will not stay 5. Most likely it will be over 20. It could be 30. It could be 60. It all depends on how 
enthusiastic the market is for Snapchat. But this is the main, most useful and main data that we're going to use to value the future. So I take these numbers and I put them on the chart. And then you need you need to get good at guessing what the what the future value could be. So what's a good example? So if uh, that might not be a good example, if you look at other stocks, you you start to get a feel for what they go for. Thirty times earnings for a growth stock is pretty normal. Um, Nvidia was hitting seventy times earnings. And it's because the high growth rate makes people want to pay more for these companies. So let's just look at a 2029, 173, and then guess what 2030 might be. I just guessed $2. I just grew out what the analysts are expecting one more year. So that's a question mark right there. So then you apply a multiple, 30 to 60. 30 by $2 is 60 bucks. 60 by two dollars is 120 so that is my range of possibility i have no idea where it will be in the future but i need to have some idea of value i think realistically 60 70 bucks maybe that could happen but i have to wait five years this is a growing business so once i do that homework i want this stock it makes me feel comfortable how low can it go well i have to do that homework too I think it could go as low as maybe $5, maybe lower. So that's my risk to reward scenario. I think it could go to $5 and I would not be, I'd, I would not be scared or concerned. I would be excited because I get to buy the stock even cheaper. So now that I know both my risk reward, I'm willing to buy shares and dollar cost average at 9, 8, and 7, let's say. If it goes 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, maybe I'm not so willing to buy as many shares because there's other opportunities. But if it goes 8, 7, 6, 5, I'm interested because it could be a $60 stock, a $70 stock, maybe even a $100 stock over five years. That would be a nice return for me. So long, long stock, small, as it goes down, I would buy more. And then if it really goes down, I might buy one year call options, two year call options. On the sell put side, I, I would be willing to sell puts at the money at nine, at eight and seven. Uh, those are juicy right now. So what that means is someone might be buying puts. I'm willing to sell them because I get a credit to buy stock at a lower price. And if instead of going down, the stock goes up, I just earn the credit. So it's just another way for me to make income on the stock while I wait. So that is my logic and thinking when I look at any stock. The other thing I'll do is look at the balance sheet, but there's nothing interesting in this balance sheet, so I'm not gonna go over it. Most important is have an idea of the future have an opinion and that's why I like using data from Seeking Alpha. You could also do your own estimates um, but at first I always start with other people's opinions and I like to watch the numbers change over time. Uh, let me know if you found this useful. This is a case study for Snapchat. I will do other ones and over time you too will get a feel for valuation and have your own system, your own style. Cheers.